Hello and welcome to an abstract breakdown. In this video, we're going to take an ideal scientific abstract, break it down into all of its key components, and show you what they are, why they're important, and how to put them all together. This video is taken from my online e-course, Blank Page to Manuscript Draft. Uh, a link is going to be available below if you're interested in learning more. And additionally, this video is going to be part of the first part of a five-day complimentary e-course email series that you can sign up to receive directly in your inbox. So again, I'm Casey Butler. This is Butler SciComm and welcome to your abstract breakdown. Hello and welcome to the abstract module. Like all of the other sections, we are going to start here first with the breakdown of an ideal abstract. Before we jump straight into that though, I want to talk a little bit about the title and the abstract of your paper. Because in the structuring module, when we covered how to structure your manuscript, we left the abstract and the title out of that structuring scheme. And so now I want to give a little bit of an idea of where those fit in overall in your manuscript. If you look at the diagram that is up on the screen, this is a little cartoon illustrating the relative views of the different parts of your paper. As you can see from here, the paper body actually has relatively less views than either your abstract or your title, with your title getting the most, your abstract getting the next, and then your paper body. And so what that means is to get people interested in your paper, to get people reading your paper, you have to get them interested in your abstract and interested in your title so that they will open the paper and continue reading the paper. So that means that if this hourglass shape that we've been showing throughout this entire course so far is going to be your paper body, then then that means that your title and your abstract are actually a magazine cover that is out there advertising your paper body splashed across the front of this cover, trying to get people interested to open up and pick up this magazine, or in this case, your paper body, okay? So we don't want to think about our abstract and title as necessarily the same as the rest of the paper. We want to consider these for what they are. They are a way to catch people's attention and get them interested in opening our paper. So that being said, we really want to consider this abstract the advertisement for our paper. And in this advertisement, we want to include what we did and roughly what our findings were. So in this advertisement, we want to include what we did and touch on the major findings of our paper just enough to pique interest and get a reader wanting to continue to know what we did in this paper. Wording this another way, this means that your abstract includes the purpose of your research placed into a perspective or a context that is going to attract a reader's attention. So with that being said, now we can jump straight into the different parts of the abstract. For other sections that I do breakdowns of, I usually stick to one color scheme and two shades within that color scheme. Now, because the abstract is a little bit different, the abstract is actually going to sort of take on the shape of your paper itself, starting from a broad scope, narrowing to your research and broadening back out again. Uh, I'm going to actually keep the colors the same as I keep them for all of the other parts of the paper. So for instance, the parts of an abstract that match with your introduction are going to be shades of green, just like introduction breakdowns that I give you in my program. So I've already briefly mentioned that our abstract is going to contain a somewhat similar structure to a paper body and that it's still going to be a bit of an hourglass. This hourglass though is going to be a slightly awkwardly shaped hourglass and I will show you why as we go through the different parts that I want you to include in this abstract and why we're going to include them. So the first part of an abstract is going to be the first part of the main body of your paper as well. It is going to be this dark green introductory color that gives the readers a major problem that you are addressing with this work. You want this to be just like your introduction and that this is going to be a big broad statement that is going to attract the attention of a lot of readers and give them an idea of not why your research exists yet. This 
first sentence, this darkest green color, is going to tell the reader why your field needs to exist, why you are even trying to do this work in the first place. That is going to be a much broader scope. It is going to attract the attention of more readers, and it is going to be able to help them put your work into a much broader context, which is very important for understanding uh, the impact that your research has on the field. The next part of an abstract is still going to be colored green because it's still going to be considered introductory material. It's going to be slightly lighter green because it's narrower in scope. And this is giving the readers a reason why they should care. A lot of people go into abstracts thinking that if they just give the reader enough information, the importance will be obvious, but that is never true. Your abstract should always give the readers an explicit statement of why they should care. That could be any number of things that we'll get into later, but make sure that there is something there that a reader can directly relate to that tells them exactly why this is a paper that they should continue to read or continue to be interested in. Next, there's another part here, also introductory, so it's still going to be green, just a lighter shade of green because it's narrower in scope, and that would be any previous work that you need to explain to the reader for them to understand the rest of your abstract. Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a tricky section. We'll get to it a bit later because it's not necessary in your abstract and I advise not including it if you can avoid including it because you only have a limited workout in your abstract. But if it is important for you to explain the major gap that your work is filling, which will help convey that impact of your paper, then by all means, go ahead and put something in there about previous work that was done so that you can highlight why your work in this study is needed. Next, and the final section of the green introductory parts is going to be a very clear statement of your research goals, your research objectives, or your hypothesis. Just like in the introduction where we want this very clear statement of what we had done, we want that in the abstract as well. That is going to be a statement that starts with something like, herein we did this, or in this study we something like that, okay? A very clear statement that tells the reader exactly what you plan to accomplish in this study. Next, we get into the body of the paper or the body of the abstract, and we have the matching orangey colors that reflect the results section of our abstract. This is the part that writers are usually the most familiar with because this is the part that conveys the major findings of your work to the reader. We're gonna talk later when we get to the writing section about how we know how much we need to include in the abstract because again, our word count is limited. But for now, this is one of the more familiar parts for readers. And then finally, we're moving into purple because this is discussion conclusion type material. We're going to end our abstract with one statement of the importance of our work or why this work matters. Without having one line at the end of the abstract that ties it all in, that wraps this all up, and helps convey the major significance of the paper, it is often very easy for readers, and that means reviewers and editors as well, to miss the major importance of your work, to miss the impact that your work is going to have on the field. So this is a very important sentence to include, and we will talk about it further as we go through the breakdowns and writing. And then finally, and what's not fitting directly into one of these categories, and I can show you why shortly, is going to be the gap. So anything that I color in yellow text in an abstract is going to be what is an explicit statement of a gap in the field that your research is seeking to address. And again, just like the introduction, because this gap can be found in multiple of the different colors, it's not going to get its own color. It is going to get yellow text within whichever highlight color best suits it. Before we get into the specifics of the abstracts that I'm going to show you in the breakdowns, I want to walk through a couple different types of abstracts that you might see out there. And so when you go through these breakdowns, you have an idea of how to apply this information to your abstracts. The three different types that I'm going to talk about are what I'm going to call a standard abstract first. That is going to be your typical 250 word abstract. Most journals, especially most science, engineering, technology journals, are going to require a 250 word abstract. This is going to be what I consider the standard abstract. The next type that you might very commonly see is what I will call a short communication abstract. Papers that are short communications are generally shorter in length themselves, and that length shrinking requirement also then tends to apply to the abstracts. These abstracts tend to be 150 words or less, sometimes maybe even a bit shorter. 
And so you need to approach these abstracts with a slightly different attitude, a slightly different mindset to get to that very much shorter word limit. So within this short course, I'm going to talk both about standard abstracts and these short communication abstracts, showing you where you can cut and change the information that you present to the reader to adapt from a standard abstract to a short communication. Oftentimes though, these short communication abstracts might be coupled with a significant statement that is designed to be accessible to a lay audience. We're not gonna cover the significant statement in this course, but you can apply some of the same principles that we talk about in the abstracts to writing both your short communication abstract coupled with the significant statements. The same principles here are going to apply. And then finally, uh, some journals, especially medical type studies, look for a very structured abstract. This is an abstract that actually has subheadings within the abstract that consist of background information, methods, results, findings, etc. And we're not going to actually cover those specifically in this abstract, but here for you, I have a quick guide that you can check because the parts of this abstract that I'm going to talk about with you can be directly applied to a structured abstract. It is as simple as knowing which key parts of the abstract I tell you go in which parts of the structured abstract. So I will give you that information here in this video as well as in the slides. Okay, so now we are ready to look at breakdowns of ideal abstracts. This first abstract was taken from a paper in JAX, the Journal of the American Chemical Society. And when I color it according to that color scheme that I just showed you about the different parts of an abstract, we get an abstract that looks a little bit like this. I'm gonna give you a minute here to look at this abstract, see what patterns you notice before I go on and point out the key features of this ideal abstract. The first thing to notice here in this breakdown is that even though the introductory colors, those first four colors are the most space in terms of different types of things you want to bring up for your reader, it is not going to be the biggest space in terms of overall wording in your abstract. If you look here at this breakdown of how many sentences make up each one of these different categories of your abstract, you can see that much more clearly. For instance, those first two Greek colors are only half a sentence each that is mashed together at the beginning. And that's, that's great. If you can convey an overall problem and tell the reader why they should care about it in one sentence, perfect. You can save yourself a bit of space to add some things in later in your abstract. Notice also here there is a color for what was previously done. And if you'll notice what was previously done is colored in yellow. That's because they needed that to convey the gap in the field. And so they have one sentence of what was previously done. Then they follow that with one sentence of the hypothesis research objectives for this paper. And then move into the big chunk of this abstract, which is actually the results section. So if you notice here, either by counting the sentences where there are three sentences, or just by looking at how much of each color is present in the abstract, you can see that the results do in fact take up the biggest chunk of this abstract. This is where most people are the most comfortable writing it because most people just want to pack their abstract with as many results as possible. So you can see that this is still going to be the big chunk of your abstract. But the point of all of these different categories I'm giving you is to show you and bring your attention to these other things that you want to make sure you include. Okay, so don't panic. You can still include a lot of results. We're just gonna talk about how to make sure you include these other important points. And then finally, again, you have one sentence at the end that is going to be that conclusion that brings the whole abstract full circle, tells the reader why this work is important, what impact your work is going to have. So the next thing then to note, we'll just start at the beginning of the abstract and work our way down, is that you do have this first sentence that indicates an overall major problem and relates it to the reader. So remember that I said that this journal was JAX, so this is a chemistry-based journal. That means that most of the readers are going to be very comfortable with chemistry-based topics, but this particular abstract is maybe not quite so chemistry-heavy as a lot of things you'll find in JAX. So notice how this first sentence is written. This first sentence is written perfectly to be understandable to the audience of a JAX journal and help them understand what the importance is of this work that is being presented that maybe isn't the same type of synthetic chemistry work that you might often find in JAX. And it can be very simple here. It doesn't need to be complex. 
With this sentence, they're just able to remind the reader that proteins play a huge role in biological processes, and therefore there is a huge interest in being able to control this and control their release from biomaterials. Next, like I briefly hinted at before, this is followed by a very clear statement of the gap. And so, like I said, this green color here, this third color, is one that is maybe not necessary in your abstract. You don't need to include it. But, but in this paper, the gap that they were filling was something that was a gap in previous work. And so to actually bring up the gap, to be able to explicitly state the gap, it was important to be able to state previous work. And so what they did here, the way that they did that was just pointed out the problems with pre previously existing work, the reason that this research had to exist, the reason that they had to go in and do this work, and that is exactly what you want to see. Just this very clear statement of exactly why this work needed to be done. If you do nothing else in your abstract to convey the importance of your work, this is the number one thing to do because it makes it very clear immediately why your work, why your research is needed and necessary. Do not expect the reader to be able to find this for themselves. Unless they are an expert in your field, they likely will not be able to do that. So give this to them explicitly in no uncertain terms. Make sure that it is absolutely apparent in your abstract why your work needed to exist. And then again, like I briefly mentioned before, if you're able to put the gap in a different part, in a different color of the, this green part, you don't need to include this previous work section. But if this is where you need to put in the gap, by all means, include this previous work. So moving down in the abstract, the next part we're going to get to is a narrower scope of this green color. And this is going to be that explicit statement of the goals of this paper. So this is going to be that here and we, that in this paper we did this sort of statement that very clearly tells the reader exactly what you sought to accomplish in this paper. Again, just like the gap in the field, do not expect that your reader is going to be able to intuit this or discover this for themselves. Do not leave this up to chance. Put a very clear, very explicit statement right here saying exactly what you meant to do in this work so the reader knows exactly what to expect when they go into this paper. And then next, we move into this chunk of the abstract that again, people are usually just the most familiar with. And this is going to be the summary of the key results in the paper, okay? Again, I said key results here, okay? I didn't say every result. I didn't say a complete outline of the paper. Your abstract is designed to catch a reader's attention. It does not have to tell them everything that you did in the paper. It does not have to give every single result. This needs to be an overview, a good idea of what the reader could expect. Maybe anything really important or noteworthy or stand out should definitely be included, but you do not have to feel pressure to put every single one of your results into this abstract, okay? Especially because this is the number one way people trying to cram too much info information in here that I see for people cutting into these other parts of the abstracts, the greens or the purple parts. And as we're going through this, I'm hoping you're being, you're able to realize what the importance of these other colors are and you realize why it is not a good idea to cut into these other colors. So when we get especially to the writing section, we're going to focus here on what to include and to know how much to include so you don't feel pressure to cut out the other sections of the abstract. And then finally, again, we're going to end this abstract on the statement of importance. So this is going to be that one statement we're going to color here in purple to match our conclusion that brings it all full circle for the reader, summarizes it all again, shows how the work that you did fits into that problem that you brought up at the beginning, just sort of tells the reader exactly what impact your paper is going to have. Okay, Again, like every other part of this paper, every other part of this abstract, don't expect your reader to intuit that on their own. Don't leave any room for doubt. Make this very clear, put a very clear statement there of exactly what the importance of your work is. Okay, so next we're going to move into a short communication type abstract to show you the difference between that standard 250 word abstract and the much shorter abstracts you're going to need to write for a short communication piece. So this one in particular has, was taken from Nature Communications. And when I color this abstract, this is what you see. I'm going to give you a minute here to just look at this, see if you can come up with any of these patterns on your own, anything that stands out to you before I walk you through this example. Okay, so one thing that I hope you notice is the places where the cuts were made. Okay, 
So if you look here through this abstract, if you look at the number of sentences for each of the different parts of the abstract, one thing you might notice is that yes, that one third green color was cut out. There is no mention of previous work in the field. So that does save a sentence here. But otherwise, there's still a half a sentence for the first two green colors. There's still a full sentence for the hypothesis or objectives. There's still a full sentence for the major importance of this work. And so the cuts here were just sort of taking the word counts that they could out of those sections. So they were able to remove here the previous work, maybe shorten the wording otherwise. But after that, it is the results that are shortened. And this is something that is counterintuitive to a lot of people. They think that you need to include as many results as possible. But again, remember the point of your abstract. The point of your abstract is an advertisement for your paper. It is interesting people in your paper. You don't need to list all of your results to get that to happen. But you do need to set up a problem and its importance. And then you, at the end, you have to convey how your work fits into that and the major significance of it in light of that problem and its importance. Okay, so again here, Note that sure, if you can shorten some of those other sections, by all means shorten those other sections, but do not eliminate them. When in doubt here, when you really need to cut words, really truly consider cutting from your results section here to get down to that word count that you need for this abstract. So like I mentioned before here, just going through the different parts, there was no need for previous work here. This abstract was able to discuss the major gap that the work is trying to fill, but it was able to include it in the part of why the reader should care. And it was not therefore needed to have a part of previous work in the field. So that whole part, that whole chunk is able to be eliminated here. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this abstract, you still have that green at the beginning, that purple at the end that is framing the results. You still have that bringing up the importance of why this research needed to be done at the beginning, and at the end, summarizing how this research is impacting the field and the importance of this work in light of the problem. So you still have that frame on either end of the results that is helping convey the importance of this work to the reader. Okay, so the overall take home story here with these short abstracts is that yes, you have to cut word count out, but be aware of why each of these different parts of your abstract are there in order to help you know which words to cut. Because in the end, if this short communication abstract is only results, your results don't matter if the reader doesn't understand the importance of this work, okay? And remember, it's not just the reader once this is published, because the first thing that an editor or a reviewer is going to read from your paper is also going to be the abstract. So set yourself up for greatness for every part of this process and make sure that it is impossible for your reader, whether it be the reader of your journal or the editor who's deciding to send this out to review, or the reviewers who are deciding if this is ever going to be published, make sure that the importance and impact of your work is clear. And therefore, do not cut the green and purple parts out of your abstract. If you can shorten them and write these things more concisely, great, but make sure that they are there. I'm going to go through one more quick short communication abstract for you just to point out Again, how this is done in a short communication abstract because these are quite challenging. So if you look at the colors here, you're gonna see the same sort of color scheme again, but there's one very interesting point that I wanna make here and I wanna see if you guys can catch it in this abstract. And so if what you notice is that there were even further cuts to the results section to be able to include a sentence of previous work, absolutely correct. And this is the point that I definitely want to make here, okay? So notice now they had to include this previous work section because this is where the gap needed to fit in. And the way to include that, instead of cutting those beginning sentences, instead of cutting that last sentence, they cut from the results. Now you can take time, you can pause this video, you can read through this abstract, but even with only one sentence of key results, this abstract is still an effective and powerful abstract. It still conveys its point. It still tells you what's going on in this paper. It still is able to convey the results that were done as well as their importance. So remember here, and I hope this serves as a good example, that the number and amount of results that you include in the abstract are not at all a guarantee of the effectiveness of your abstract. Remember, like I said before, your results do not matter if you are unable to convey the importance of those results. 
So yeah, here again, I'm just highlighting how few results are actually mentioned in this paper. It's really only one sentence. It's not a very big part of the paper, but again, it's still an effective abstract. Why? Because the few results that they do give to the reader here are framed by highlighting the impact, highlighting the importance at the beginning and the end of this abstract. And so even though there's not so many results that are brought up, it is very clear the importance of these results and that makes all the difference in the world. So there is your abstract breakdown. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you guys now have a really good idea of what an ideal scientific abstract looks like and know what to start paying attention to when you are looking at an abstract or putting together your own. If you want more information, uh, this is actually the first video of a five part email series and you can sign up on our mailing list to get the complete series completely free sent to your inbox with an additional four videos on putting together abstracts. So with these five videos, the first one is going to be the abstract breakdown video that you've already seen. The second video is going to show you the most common problems that we see in abstracts. The third video is going to show you how to analyze and edit an abstract on your own, giving you all of the key things that you should look for in your own work. The fourth video is going to put all of this together for you and show you how to actually write an abstract from a completely blank page. It's going to give you questions that you can ask yourself to brainstorm the key information to include. It's going to show you where to find that information throughout the body of your research paper and then help you put it all together within the word limit of your abstract. And then finally, the fifth video is going to give you the do's and the don'ts, the things you need to keep in mind when writing your abstract and give you a checklist of what you can do if you're stuck and having a hard time getting words on paper. So again, you can sign up for our email list. I'll put the link in this video below to get instant access to these videos sent one, to, one per day to your inbox. Then if you're interested, you want a little bit more information maybe, you can also follow us both on Twitter and on Facebook where all this month we're releasing a lot of tips and some of our best information about abstracts that are just going to be out there for you guys. And so I hope you're enjoying all about abstract April. I hope these videos were useful for you. And if they are, please subscribe below. Thank you so much for being here with us and happy abstract writing.